generic YouTube introduction. So this video is going to be looking at EnviroBlock, which is a project being built within the IOTEX ecosystem. Um, they're aimed at bridging smart homes to the blockchain. They've got a few, well, several use cases and then one sort of live example that they've gone through. We'll sort of have a look at this website here and then we will go through the white paper briefly. We won't cover it all. I'll try and keep it brief, not ages and ages long. I know we like brief videos. So EnviroBlock's very, very early. You can see that no, no devices online here, but they have done their test. Um, they seem to provide, finally be providing a use case for the Pebble, which is very handy. Um, basically, they analyze data from your smart homes and then they can use this data in several different ways. Here, they give some use, use cases of who they can sell data to. We will skip the white paper for now. The team basically consists of these two. They do, uh, I, I, Will's live on Twitter. You can go on YouTube, they do live streams with the IOTEX team. They seem like two very friendly guys. I'll put some links in the description if you want to go and check out some of the, the longer information available about Viroblock. I'll try to keep this up below between five and ten minutes. Here you can see IOTEX in on Twitter. Yeah, definitely go and follow them on Twitter. So if I bring up the white paper for us now. I have highlighted some areas for me to read. So this is a, if you come and download the white paper again, you'll probably get a newer version of this. This is a very early draft version of the white paper, the subject to change. So that's at the start, I obviously should probably read a lot more and then it thins out towards the end. So the problem EnviroBlock is trying to solve. So the current smart home devices are segregated, centralized and vulnerable to data compromise. This has largely prevented mass utilization and trust for data collected by IoT devices as they traditionally, traditionally have been susceptible to hardware device hacks, malware installation, device data manipulation. Solution, EnviroBlock will utilize the security and scalability of the IoTex blockchain combined with the tamper-proof hardware and unique device identities to collect smart home data in a trusted and verifiable way for the very first time. This analyzed data will provide the clearest picture of a property's efficiencies and utility consumption, whilst identifying opportunities for improvement and energy efficient upgrades. EnviroBlock has tremendous opportunity to be the bridge that brings property owners to the blockchain and Web3 space, rewarding them for valuable data they are providing to the network. This model will ensure sustainability, long-term growth for the EnviroBlock network and its investors. So yeah, you can see kind of what they're going for. You basically take, gather all the data on your from all your smart home devices. It's all encrypted. It's all trusted, tamper-proof. You can then sell that to design to, to designers, to people who need the data, to suppliers, to the government and also people could get rewarded for having eco-friendly homes for being eco-friendly landlords or whatever so here are some of the users of the data so home builders partner with commercial and custom home builds to install our devices as part of their smart home package giving new homeowners option to contact EnviroBlock to get connected to the network and start earning data rewards so putting it in brand new homes right from the start. Real-time utility monitoring for property owners, monitoring all the utility uses in your profit property so you can see how efficient they are if you're trying to let it to someone else. If you're doing, you know, where the utilities are included in the rent, etc. Product design, manufacturing, so installing trackers into products. I Put a note here so think how much your phone tracks you and how valuable this information is your phone tracks where you look where you click how long you look at each page you know and you think how valuable that data has been over the last few years with all these big tech giants just becoming trillion dollar companies very quickly just with our data and with systems like these you can gather that data about a lot more have it being trusted and then give the value back to the users it's very very powerful uh, local mole, mole, oh my God, monitoring of utilities, air quality, weather. So this is basically monitoring 
like weather stations to provide weather um, more accurate weather reports to give people um, more notice with natural disasters etc and then future DAPS and metaverse projects I think the biggest easiest thing to visualize here is when eventually if we do have a digital clone you could have real world data come into that digital clone have it be trusted and then the digital clone could mimic the real world so for example weather sun temperature tides coming in and out whatever it may be so section three example environment block data sets so the raw value of useful real world data is growing with each passing day so this is the examples of different types of data they could gather from your house so smart controls for your lights blah 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 count when the lights are on when they're off um utilities monitor utilities monitoring monitoring your utilities when your gas is on when your gas is off how much you use a lot of this stuff happens already but again it's trusted and we can own our own data solar energy generation so how useful solar panels are you know if you have a large set of data on that it shows exactly where to put them exactly how efficient that area is over with a large data set over a long period of time you can really iron out efficiencies in certain areas weather stations briefly spoke about this before one thing I, I work on the railway one thing we do is we install weather stations with the environment agency and that's just because our assets are very linear they're very long they don't have to buy small patches of land all over the place and get utilities there you know our, our rail networks already got you the utilities but we have these all over the place every sort of 10 20 kilometers at least so you imagine the kind of accurate data and money you'd save by just doing that in, with little tiny things all over people's homes and then data set five is irrigation systems probably imagine what's going on here so data providers you know i'm not going to go in depth with all of this i do suggest you come and download this and have a read of yourself um, i've highlighted discovering patterns and relationships that might not otherwise be recognizable in smaller localized data sets so yeah i thought this was a really interesting point um you can see the, the kind of understanding we have of things now now that we have access to these large data sets and you you think the sort of things we could potentially understand in the future when we have access to large amounts of data like this we might even understand things that we never before sort of with storms and natural disasters we can get real precious sets and all sorts here they give a bunch of numbers about iot and smart homes but 127 new iot devices are connected to the internet every second i just thought that was huge and i know most of these are probably not trusted but i think that's going to change in the future and even even if one percent of these is trusted that's one device that's more than one device a second so i think that's insane um, in an effort to incentivize energy and efficiency and conservation the data providers with more energy efficient slash eco-conscious properties will earn additional rewards i also wanted to add here that the government often provides economic rewards for environmental behavior you know sort of rewarding ev holders you know they're doing um grants for solar panels i've recently had new installation put in my attic by the government they do grants for boilers double glazing windows they do all sorts and if you had a system like this set up where it just generally knew how environment environmentally friendly you would be and then the government could put money into this and it would incentivize people to behave better environmentally it just gives some examples of people who might purchase the data once the data started gathering this goes through some of the milestones they need to reach in order to receive payments for machine fi um, you know if you want to come have a look at this you do but one thing i'd recommend you do as a follower is, is they have social media followers is a requirement on here so if, if you do like the project and, and if nothing else just go and follow these guys on on twitter so they can get there Help, help get towards their milestones and this is the live case study that they've carried out and i'm not going to go in depth uh, but basically there's two houses one has the vent in the roof and they collected some data and obviously the one without the vent in the roof was much hotter i think this is interesting because i live in britain 
and one of the things we do here is we keep our houses as warm as possible so it's all about double glazing you know putting new insulation in new boiler re new new radiators but in this one they seem to be trying to keep the house cool which i think is funny and something i've never really considered is how much you air con your house naturally you know but things like this can make a massive difference as you can see just in this case study and as they gather more and more as the set of data they gather is more and more vast it'll just prove this more and more um, here they, they sort of give more detail on their case study again come read this if you want here they talk about property bound tokens and what this basically does is it stops you picking up all your IOT devices and taking them with you when you leave the house I think this is a good idea so the devices aren't the expensive thing and it keeps all the devices sort of together it keeps homes so smart and it, it keeps the data consistent as well for that object so property bound tokens are fixed NFTs that are tied to the property where they were minted for not to the person slash wallet that was originally minted the PBT so they stay with the property yeah our goal is to maintain each property's continual data flow after real estate transactions are completed so even if get, that property gets a new owner the data continues and then this is just a cool example of a housing ad in the future but this four bed three bath house has a three car garage swimming pool and pays you for your smart home data it might just be a, a tag that you get on your on the real estate advertisement sort of the recycling or the vegan tag you get now it might be a whole depends i don't know how much how profitable this will be but it might be a whole whole deal you know uh, talk briefly they're going to release a token when they get a thousand devices connected they're going to release a token they're going to DAO it I don't think we want to go too into that now but yes yeah, seems to be the standard sort of crypto token setup with burns and the buyback and you're, you're rewarded in this token for mining but I don't think the guys are 100% sure what they're going to do here so I didn't want to dwell on this too much here they have their target goals I like this, I like that this is seven years, that's quite a long set to go for, although it is procedurally general, I, I think it will go up and then up and then up, rather than it's just logarithmically up at the moment, isn't it? But I think it will match the, the crypto market more. Another thing to notice is they have two devices per data provider, and then on year seven it's five devices per data provider. I think this just means that you know, in the first use case they just have a pebble in your attic a pebble in the living area and it compares the two temperatures and that's done whilst by year seven they want people to have one on the roof doing weather maybe one in the basement maybe one at the bottom of the garden doing the humidity and, and all sorts going on you know so i think that's the intention there of the increased devices uh the value of web3 revolution so this is just a, a real nice paragraph about Web3 that I thought I'd add in, I think they've worded this really well. But data is now considered the most valuable resource in the world, surpassing oil, which is huge. That hasn't gone unnoticed, especially by the large technology companies that have been mining our data for free and with little consent, if any, for years. The Web3 revolution cha changes all of this, putting users back in control of their generated data. And then they just give a timeline of Web3 and the difference is own and monetize your data. So again, I think that's an expl excellent explanation of Web3. And I think this is an excellent use case of cryptocurrency, an excellent use case of Web3. And it's potentially huge in the, fu in the future. Um, I think we come to the end now here. That's just a diagram of Web3, uh, of, of WebStream, which is the IOTEX layer 2 that streams, streams data from the real world to the blockchain. Go and check WebStream out if you want, not going to focus on that now. Here is where they've recorded some stuff with uh, Pebble Tracker. And yeah, here, they, here they talk about the team. You've got Will and Charles. So yeah, go and check these two guys out. Go and check out their website. Follow them on Twitter. They, they have a, an hour long interview they do. Like an interview is like a live stream sort of thing with on the iTex website. So yeah, go and check them out. Follow them on Twitter. And uh, yeah, get your pebble trackers working for these guys. There's, uh, there's not much else they can do right now. So thanks all for watching. See you next time.